Hi everyone, we are here with the Candidate Series Chamber Chatter Live with Summer City Council candidate Sharla Newman. Welcome Sharla. Thank you. I'm I love that you're doing this. Oh well we are super excited to have you today. I know there's a lot of people who know you in the community, um, your commitment to the Chamber and now in the political world. Uh, there's a lot of facets to you and we are excited to uncover all of them. <laughs> um, I'm Tara Doyle Enneking, the CEO of the Puyallup Sumner Chamber. I'm Ivy Anneking. I'm the Director of Membership Engagement here at the Puyallup Sumner Chamber. And I'm Charlotte Newman. Many things, but most relevant, also a candidate for uh, City of Sumner City Council. Fabulous. So, well, hey, let's just dive right in and, and get to the bottom of why you decided to throw your hat in the ring here. <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> uh, you know, I view... It's funny because I never um, imagined myself wanting to be behind that side of the dais at uh, public meetings. Um, but uh, it's always been, I think, considered in our family, uh, my family in particular, a form of public service. And I always try to help support candidates um, who I think would make government better, just through trans, like, just make it through providing more, create like a better process, creating more faith in the process and transparency and whatnot. And I kept thinking about, okay, who who's this year? Who's this year? And I was, no offense, like, I, I think there's a, a lot of good people and I've met some of them. I thought, oh, I wish I'd known you sooner because it should be you. But um, I just thought it's my turn. It's my turn to give back um, and try and contribute uh, like in ways that where my skill, where I have a specific skill set that helps benefit, I, I hope, the community. Hey, I saw Kyle Harkey's watching. Hey, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Don't ask questions. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid. <laughs> well, let's see if Kyle's sons have any questions for you. I know you're kind of a favorite auntie in that community to, to a lot of people. So you're a good kids lover. I love they're, a lot of your They're going to ask me there. to say words they're not allowed to say. Oh, no. <laughs> you're, you're that kind of favorite auntie. <laughs> I love it. Um, so yeah, you also have some um, ties and advocacy that you've done for the chamber. How long have you been involved with our chamber? Oh, well, that's a great question. I have no idea. Like years. <laughs> but years. I mean years. So I've been, um, I've been like a, I think a quiet board member for a number of years. And one of the reasons, and I will say when I first sort of, when I really knew that I was going to cement myself in, in the area, um, I had I was on the cusp like I oh, I, sh I won't name the other chambers but I tried other chambers yeah. like test them out but including this one and the reason why I became invested in this one is because this was the one that seemed so interested in advocacy mm -hmm. and actually doing something more like the coffees are great but I didn't need the retail networking and in order to change like the lives of businesses it's the behind the scenes advocacy right and um and this chamber has been really great about understanding that and is really one of the few voices like Tacoma Tacoma Pierce does a great job yes. but these other chambers outside of Tacoma really also need to be represented uh, and and this group is so great. You guys go down to Olympia. You do the face to face, both on city councils and with legislators and members of Congress. Um, and so you guys were actually providing true value. And so, so like so this one, I made home. Terrific. Um, so tell us a little bit about your day job because a lot of that advocacy is really what you do. Kyle, Kyle loves think. this question. Kyle always I says, think. You or, or you're a captain of a ship. No, <laughs> Kyle always likes to tell me, he goes, you know that no one knows what you do, right? And it's like, the I cat always, is out of the bag now. I always <laughs> assume it will bore people, that I don't know where to start. But um, what I, I am a government affairs consultant, and I feel like in order to, and a lot of people, honestly, I mean, you could say lobbyist in some ways, but it's usually with far, it's not as simple as going down to Olympia and just asking for a line item in the budget. It's usually for far more complex policy issues um, where there is an entire round of public education that needs to be involved and also protecting clients and clients come in all forms like both like private sector like businesses but I've also done work for nonprofits and for governments. Um, including, for instance, in Pierce County, helping set up the flood control zone district, mm -hmm. and so, so it's like so it's also protecting it's like 
helping get people through the process because right. most uh, I do uh, go, I've been involved in government for a long time but I've never um, kitted myself into believing that and, and never even expecting that other people should be as familiar with government as I mm -hmm. need to be right you know and and I think and that's where people have a disadvantage and you always want to help equalize the playing field in government I think anyone who's going in there like it's, it's it can be daunting sometimes right what um, are some of the more issues I guess closer to your campaign um, that you would like people to know about you what what are those important advocacy pieces so I love Sumner I mean, I I I Sumner too. No, I, was saying, I picked Sumner. You know, like some yeah. like some people are here, and I and I valued it. Like, in part one of the things I love, like, and I know so many of my friends are the fourth generation right. uh, people who grew up in Sumner, That's awesome. and and he, some people might see it as a. I don't even do want to consider. I don't even consider it in terms of advantage or disadvantage. It doesn't even matter. The point is. Kind of like having an adopted kid mm -hmm. like hey you should like know that i picked you right rather than like Shaking just being the place oh that. sorry sorry i was already born <laughs> oh, anyway so patty, I'm we're really really door. patty summers patty oh. denny everyone's tuned in just want to quickly say hi thanks for watching today councilwoman door thank you oh hi <laughs> sorry, she today. said go charla <laughs> um julie's fantastic even when we disagree we have so much fun uh <laughs> So, um, anyway, so I love Sumner, and and the funny part is, is that it was the perfect balance. Well, first of all, it was the community assets that really, and and the community like invited me in. You know, I had all kinds of experience before I ended up deciding that that was permanently where I was going to be, and so they were extremely warm, welcoming, and it's just the perfect mix of of like of urban conveniences and small town charm but even that makes it sound corny it's more than it's community investment mm -hmm. like it, mm -hmm. the, the um like the charm can be a facade you know but it is actually like truly like community investment mm -hmm. and the more you get to know it like it's just impossible to not love right and i, agree. I mean even with friends in seattle like i brag about it all the time yeah and then they asked me to show them where it is on a map, but uh, <laughs> but, but it's because I talk about it. I love I love Sumner, um, so many reasons. Uh, for example, oh you guys, go to uh, Rhubarb Days tomorrow. Oh yes, which Good they way um, to plug they have a uh, yes no and they have in the evening they have their I don't it's three B's I don't remember the order. <laughs> Beer, brats, and bingo, or oh. bingo, brats, and beer. I, I don't know, <laughs> but somewhere in the there. The three B's event. <laughs> I have friends. We've already, I think they actually supply everything that you need for bingo, but just in case, we even bought our own daubers already. Oh, like, boy. This is prepared. <laughs> feels so old. Amazon, there are reviews, by the way, of bingo daubers. Oh. And we went with the one recommended from the woman playing bingo since 1972. Good job. Hey, if you use that kind of homework when you're approaching a problem, that's probably pretty good. It was an accident. <laughs> we went down a rabbit hole. It was kind of funny. Sounds like it. <laughs> um, good. Oh, so how long have you actually been in Sumner? <coughs> I'm always horrible with years. Um, I don't recall that either because I think I started doing like really truly becoming invested and helping out with Sumner including like the why since it's probably been about seven years so I think somewhere between 2012 or 13 like one of those and then um and then was spending almost every day there but not technically like but it was yeah. right outside of limits mm -hmm. of city limits um until my place opened up yeah, so for those of you if you don't know i live above trackside pizza uh <laughs> the I, greatest place in the world <laughs> talk about don't they tell you not to tell the internet where you live <laughs> yeah this but the world wide web you're there are multiple here. barriers we have yeah, good, multiple good, viewers good luck getting through though the, on a, like, like i can't get packages delivered there like so like i, I feel pretty safe um but uh anyway so i think about a year and a half to a year before that was opening and like while yeah. that was being built and i feel a little bit bad because like kind of like through work i found out that yeah. that development yeah. was going in and 
I mean, I stalked the owners. Well, I, I, I truly did. And I, knows what I she let wants. everyone know, I'm like, when you talk to them, let them know, like, I want it and yeah. I want the front, I want the front place. Um, and then I ran into them. This is what's so great about Sumner. It's a small world. Yep. I ran into them at a restaurant and I interrupted uh, their dinner. I was like, I want to lease right now. And that was well more than a year before I moved in. And okay. anyway, so ever since, like, so living at that current place anyway, ever since that, that, Whenever that went in, yeah. we need to ask for it back. Wonderful. When it was built. <laughs> so yeah, right. You're really like you talk about community investment, right, and mm -hmm. how that's really important to you. Um, if elected, what kind of changes would you want to make, or what kind of would you want to strengthen there, or deepen there? What are you really looking to accomplish as a city council member? So some of it is really boring, um, and that I mean, my number one goal and it's not one that you usually talk about with people because it's a total snooze fest but stewardship like good stewardship and um and i feel like i carry an advantage because of my experience with caught every week having to um work within so many different jurisdictions you get to see the best and the worst so you like you get to learn from people's mistakes and you also get really good ideas from people who are trying something new that might take us longer to see and so um and so just that kind of exposure so that you have people there asking questions like curiosity will do amazing things right. like if you're just curious enough it helps leading lead it leads to better ideas mm -hmm. um anyway so good stewardship is is one of is really foundational for me um the other things this is weird. Most people run, I shouldn't say most, a lot of people tend to run for office after they, um, after they run into something that angers them or they're mm -hmm. frustrated by. They're and, and that's, because, that's the catalyst right. for getting involved. I am not running out of anger, which and I can get angry and frustrated with things, but I am not running out of anger. And that's, I am running truly out of optimism. Mm -hmm. There are so many regional decisions and things at play. And, and grow, I've, I have been frustrated watching the last decade of decisions coming from, uh, like we have great council members there, but we haven't always. And, and there's only so much that a single person can do. And right. so you need people who want to all I hope that they disagree with one another. That right. leads to a healthier government. Right. But I'll still still have similar goals. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the problem of it's getting better the last couple of years, but before that, their problem was there were no goals. It was just NIMBY, mm -hmm. just not in my backyard, all mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. all things. That's a very unrealistic approach to policy because growth is going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no force field that keeps people outside of Sumner, Correct. and and we're paying the price of people not wanting to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, like the traffic is terrible. Mm -hmm. it, it's terrible. Right. And um, and I applaud the city for buckling down. Like they did an incredible job about getting funding for Traffic Avenue right away. And so things are improving, but um, you kind of constantly want that view ahead. Right. Like it's, it's really out of optimism instead of anger in terms of why I'm running. I think that was pretty eloquently put. Um, I really enjoyed the other day at our candidate forum. Uh, we got a little, I guess, peek at what your background looked like, your parents, your family. Um, I think people are always interested in, in, you know, what are your roots and how were you brought up? It's kind of, I know I always am. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, yeah. you know, sometimes it's a weird way, but I always, oh, including with work. Yeah. I always want to know, like, I want to know how they grew up, like where they grew up. Yeah. Like it just it. Re First of all, I don't think we can escape it. Like it just, right. you know, um, like you can. That's not what you're running from. That's not what you were running from. <laughs> My parents, they sometimes wonder, but no, I am not. I am not. Um, no, but I do think that my like. My upbringing like helped shape me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, a very frequent joke in our family that we had to have been the product of a science experiment. <laughs> like one thing that did not come up, like in 60 seconds, I think I got through to my parents, which, you know, and my dad, he was, he's a truck driver and he was an orphan by age of six, and which has made him yeah. 
so grateful for everything. Like his child is crummy after right, that, right. but so is adult. It makes him just incredibly proud. Right. Uh, like my sibling, I do have. I have a younger sister and a younger brother, and we benefited from him having constant pride in us because mm -hmm. it was all better than he had mm -hmm. hoped for mm -hmm. while growing up. Like yeah. it exceeded, you know. Yeah, he just, he always says, he's like, I'll be fine if I die today. Like, he's like mm -hmm. it's just, life has already been better. Um, and then my mom, who is very German, and then brings us all back down to reality and makes us study for spelling bees, at least when we were growing <laughs> up. But um, but I have to credit my mom, the act, she works for like Northwest Airlines, but her whole family, I mean, do think that's actually tied to genetics. Just, uh, you have to be involved. Like, mm -hmm. it just... And a lot of them choose to do through politics, but it could be through anything. I wrote my first letter to the editor when I was in fourth grade. Yeah. And and the paper printed it too. Wow. It was in defense of a teacher. But <laughs> I love it. <laughs> anyway, but like so you always yeah. are supposed to stand up. But yeah. um huh. but then the science experiment part, my siblings, so my brother is on his way to becoming a Catholic priest. Uh -huh. My sister is an amazing mom. Um, who is actually a uh, practice, she's in the LDS community, mm -hmm. uh, and an accountant by training, by training, sometimes she's working, sometimes she's not, a lot of times with the, the schools. Yep. Um, and then I went into politics. Yeah. Yeah. So, got all science experiments. We have science everything. <laughs> Oh, I love you it. guys really run the gamut on everything there, huh? We have you all covered, which makes us a very accepting family. I mean, like that truly, that that part is really cool. Like we do all get along really well and, and have fun with each other. That was a pretty telling question we asked you, but I think the most telling question, if you could share with the audience, is what's your favorite Disney movie? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need to, so I, I have two. <laughs> And, uh, I mean, I feel like everyone's going to have to Google them afterwards because I'm trying to think if either one, oh, one was in color. Okay, so the first one, <laughs> like, the first one was That Darn Cat. Oh, yeah. Oh. I, <laughs> that Darn Cat. I love that one. The remake or the, <laughs> the original. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> when I lived, so for those of you who don't know, I grew up in the Northwest, but I also left, like I kind of needed to broaden my horizons. And so I do have experience working in federal government, um, both, like in Congress on both the House and the Senate side. And, uh, and while I was there, I did adopt a black cat and it was like, we say, anyway, I did call it like that damn cat. cat. Like, no, oh, actually, yeah, cause yeah. we had to like make it more modern. We're yes, no longer yes. living in a black darn, world. We don't Sorry. Need to say darn. Yeah. Uh, anyway. And so it was DC for short. And of course, and I knew this, everyone was going to think I named it after the city, but oh. I actually named it after the movie. I love it. Um, and, you're, and you're it explored one. that cat went everywhere. It was that's a whole other story. It was a freak of nature. It was not a regular cat. But. Okay, now you, you, you oh, lured us sec in. What's the, the second, second one? one? The second one is, <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing that most people don't realize this, but Disney made a horror movie. Like, I shouldn't say a horror movie, but like a, <laughs> but true, well, actually it was. It was like, anyway. Patty it, Summers it, says she loves was, that movie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but they made a scary movie called The Watcher in the Woods. And growing ah, up, it was like that. slumber party stuff. It was our favorite movie to watch when you wanted to be freaked out. I mean, it was it's kind of, it didn't show anything horrific, but just always the views from the woods, like truly the yeah. watcher from the woods. It, <laughs> it's still, it's st like, actually there are a couple of us, we grew up watching that and we still refer to it. Like it, yeah. but I don't think most people have, I, I never run into, I never, I don't know anyone else other than my small circle friends who have who've seen it. But, so no grander visions of being a princess and just... No. <laughs> no. Like the that part Disney never... Route that some people go. <laughs> no, I, sometimes. I sometimes wonder if that was genetic too. Like mm, nope. The no, science No experiment. interest. Like give me the cat. I like the shaggy dog. You know, it's like <laughs> never cared. Like the princess, I was just, I just bored me. Honestly, yeah. the princess ones just bore me. Are you like, kidding? Did you like I'm Herbie? not kidding. How about it's Herbie? Just, Herbie was great. Herbie's her, good. Her, her, Herbie's yeah. good. Yep, yep. Oh, that's funny. So you'll be at Rhubarb Festival this weekend. Ah. Or Rhubarb Days, not festival. Yes, everyone should go. Um, I'm trying to think of the hours because you got Cindy, if you don't know her, Cindy from the Chamber Staff, she's going to be a judge for the pie contest. Woo! She is. She's very excited about it. She's been practicing her pie eating and tasting all week. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She hasn't. But she is a connoisseur of pies. 
Yeah, you've got a good one there. You can't tell by looking at her waist. <laughs> what are some of your other favorite Sumner festivals or activities? Well, so the two classics for me are the Daffodil Parade and the Santa Parade. Um, and, and both of which you can see from your... Oh, well, cool. yes, and so this is, hopefully there are going to be a limited number of people who watch this, because I will confess, um, and in fact, Kyle and Jelena Hartke, basically my first fall in the apartment, I had not paid attention to mm -hmm. schedules, and I was going to almost like a reunion dinner, like through people I used to work with in Everett, and I was headed out the door, and I just came to a slam because I ran right into people right at the front door, which never happens, and it's all of the generations of the heart keys, and they're out standing in the rain, and it was the Santa Parade, which I didn't realize was going on. I, it was raining, I felt so bad. I'm like, yeah. oh crud, here are my keys, you yeah, know, like there's not much for it, like there was, you know, there was like a little bit of furniture and some wine, whatever. All night long, they kept taking turns sending pictures of them holding my, the one house plant that someone had given me oh. and sending them to me all through my dinner oh. and, and oh. stuff. Oh. <laughs> and, trading off. and that created the tradition. It looks very different now where, so it is always, ever since then, it's been open bar and food and viewing at my place for both the Santa and the Perfect. Daffodil Parade. Good to know. And Good to know. Uh, the chief of police have has sent people upstairs yeah. like, to go and get it. So like, I don't have to know you in order for you to be there. Ah, like, I like the hospitality. I'm not gonna promise that there's room. Do you know how many views we're getting on these? Yes. Yeah, I know. That's why I was <laughs> a little bit worried. I was a little bit now. worried, but you know, like <laughs> the fire department will cut it off when it needs to be. So. Like. <laughs> oh my God. But anyway, so those are the two really <laughs> classic ones. But that's probably me as a newcomer. Like some might say, I mean. The great part about summer is they always have downtown events, yep. and so like they do like different like wine walks through like the promote um, the Sumner promotion downtown, uh, downtown promotion yes association. association always get the again the acronym the initials uh, mixed up, but also like they do one for the reunions mm -hmm. so like homecoming every single graduation year like gets a car and so like the people who graduated in 1975 still love going Aww. to that so like there's so many things and it yeah. kind of depends on just what your flavor is my favorite new one though the night market yes uh, i heard that oh. it was hit out of the park it was i got my earrings there nice oh you it, always have great earrings it, great it, earrings and great necklace and that's kind of what I love about Sumner. It keeps like the charm and there's always the classics, mm -hmm. but I really appreciate how they are open to new ideas. Yeah. Um, the chair of the Arts Commission mm -hmm. is a guy younger than me. Mm -hmm. I, have to, I have to give him a shout out. Michael Hawk I don't, he'll, he can watch later, but I mean, he truly was the one who sort of, I think, moved forward with the idea of the night market. Yeah. And it was, Packed, like both nights. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I wish they had and jazz. Know. I heard, like, right? It's oh, normal yes. jazz nights. Well, yes, I do love summers. So we have music off of Maine mm -hmm. in okay. every Friday evening in July, and movies off Maine in August. Oh, nice. Aww. Yeah, it's 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 Pretty really kind of cool. It, it, it yes. is like you just you know, so you don't have free events anymore. Like yeah. it's so hard to find free events, and all of these are free. Right. And it's like. Um, anyway, so Sumner really gives back the, in the city. Anyway, they give back that way. Yeah. I think it's great. We got a few more people tuned in. We have Giovanni Vendetti, Justin Camerata. Giovanni says, "Go oh, Charlotte." Oh, hey, Justin, go. and hi, Gio. <laughs> <laughs> Steph Hilfer uh, had a sweet comment about three powerhouse women on screen. Oh, Thank you, Steph. Oh, She's awesome. Thank I'm glad you. you're watching. I haven't seen any of the questions. Yeah. <laughs> so something we ask um, many of our guests is, uh, we just got wrapped up with Leadership Institute, and we looked at a number of different leadership styles, um, and, and certainly want to hear a little bit about where you pull your strength from, and what type of leader would you describe yourself to be? Okay, um, first, again, I have to applaud Kent Hojum oh, from yeah. the fair, <laughs> who runs the Leadership Institute. Yeah. I was so thankful at first, they were like shorthanded, I think, last year. It was the, the best accident like that could have yeah. happened because then I got to go and help out Aww. and so sort of experience like see firsthand everything that goes on yeah and they build such a um, both like helping grow people I think but also then building mm -hmm. this very tight bond be, uh, between those who experience it anyway so I have to applaud him for doing a great job yep but in terms of leadership style 
this is where background is helpful. I do like fairness is is just a sense of justice and fairness is so key to me. And I think that goes back to like my grandma who would let priests know when they were doing wrong, but also when they didn't speak English, they were German, but then would always, anyone in need of a meal who also didn't speak English or German, mm -hmm. and they would build tight bonds, but it was like shared meal, like just sort of this whole, hey, if you're in it together, right. kind of thing. And, um, and so, so I struggle with what happens today with the enemy creation. Mm -hmm. like we have this side or this right. side. My experience working in like policy and government is usually great. It, it's like uh, it's all nuance and you just have to pick among priorities but it's not a binary choice you can help shape and mold things mm -hmm. and which that doesn't happen as often when you're so busy just calling each other names right. you know like, so i like to try to understand where people come from and figure out if there are ways to make things work that haven't been considered yet you know, um but anyway, so I would say, but in terms of leadership style, like it has to be the fairness and what gets you to fairness and just, because I say all the time, if you don't have faith in the process, you won't have faith in the outcome. Mm -hmm. But so that's where like, so it has to be transparent. Mm -hmm. It has to be open. Mm -hmm. And then you can be decisive. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, because there are some people who sit there like, I want collaboration, which is great. But sometimes that's code for, we're not going to make a decision until it's a unit, yeah, like until every reason. single person, <laughs> yeah. we're like, and that's not realistic. Right. Like, so you have Absolutely. like, it just it isn't, and so, like I'm not knocking it, mm -hmm. but but it can't be, that can't be the only goal. Mm -hmm. Like it does have to be collaborative, but you also get collaboration if you have more transparency mm -hmm. and if you are more open and inviting it during the process from the very beginning. Um, I hope that all cities take it upon themselves to actually, for instance, extend their notification requirements beyond what the state currently requires. Just simple things like that. Mailers, this is what's going on. We invite you to work. Like, they have like a 500 foot limit right now. It's like a block, you know, it, it just, which like downtown Seattle, okay, that could be hundreds of homes in a condo. That's not realistic for the rest of us. That right. doesn't notify really many people where decisions may affect them and right. impact them. And I think, and it, some cities I think have pushed against doing that because they think it, oh, it just complicates, they like, then it's more work. But it's not more work. Honestly, like the more time you have to communicate with people, actually the easier the job is. What's hard is when people are taken by surprise. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, sorry, that was the long, hey. long way. But leadership no, is like, like fairness, open, transparency, and decisiveness. So we're gonna wrap some things up here, but I'd okay. like to you to, I guess, let your audience here know, and particularly those in your district in Sumner, know why they should vote for you. Aside from being super this funny and really super so smart. This sounds really <laughs> trite. This sounds very trite, but just like the night market, which is like the cool event, came from like only after the Arts Commission, like because the same people served for years and years, and they are amazing. And I applaud, I'm so happy that they also, they weren't stuck to their ideas. Like yeah. that's what they knew. And they were really open and welcoming. Oh, someone offers a new one, yeah. and they're open to that, and it's a great success. Like take from people's experience, yeah. you know. And um, and they did that with a younger person on there. Anyway, so I think there's an analogy for what I hope I can do on council as well, and sort of just update, like basically get to even better better decisions and outcomes um, through more innovative, innovative inclusion um, and outreach and also an understanding honestly ask questions like, yeah. makes a huge difference yeah. you, you just you have to care about what's in front of you I'll, I'll, I'll read the stuff and I'll ask about it like, yeah. to make sure it works yeah. and you'll let the people know well and I think you also just opened up your door, so I mean, gosh, while they're waiting for their pizza at Trackside Pizza Sumner, it sounds like we can just come on up and ask you a question if they want to. I have to admit, I feel like I'm disappointed that neither Giovanni nor Patty didn't have asked me any questions. Oh, yeah. I feel like hey, they actually asked Hey, audience, questions. you got, I know she's highly entertaining and we're asking some good questions, but 
really, this is for you. So if you have specific questions you'd like with Charlotte, yeah. hey, we'll hang out. Oh, then maybe I yeah. should thank him for not. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you can always ask questions later, and Charlotte will check the comment section and be sure to respond True. to those. True. Too. Uh -huh. So if you don't get your questions in now, be sure to ask them later on. Uh, I know that she's she's always an open door. She always answers her phone. She's she's kind of so always. That's you're always the beauty there of Facebook is that it keeps going. Yeah. Yes, it is does. that the beauty? <laughs> Depends on the question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, everyone, hey, thanks on a gorgeous Friday yeah. afternoon. Thank you so much for tuning in here. I know a lot of you will be out at Rhubarb Days. Have a great time. We've got Chamber Chatter Live coming to you on Monday with Puyallup City Council candidate Kurt Jimistat. So we're really excited for that as Another well. Great one. Another he's, great he's candidate. I'm also a board member here too. So um, great collaborators, collaborators with the chamber. Um, so thank you again, everyone, uh, signing off. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you, Charlotte.